Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Silburn Show, which is a motivating, inspiring, and educational show, which is for you, you, and you. Welcome again. Joining us today, we have Gergona Dimitrova, co-founder and managing director of the Online Business Writers website. Welcome, Gergona. Hello, Silburn. Thank you for having me. Well, fantastic. Well, the first thing I'm going to say is, who is Gergona? Oh, okay. That's a wonderful way to get the opportunity to talk a little bit about myself, just a little bit. I yeah. don't want to bore anyone. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, um, bore me. I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I arrived here several years ago just to finish a degree and later, um, after I completed my education, we actually um, launched an online business with my uh, lovely business partner, Ine, okay. and uh, we decided to create something which is entirely based online called the Writer's Website. Mm -hmm. We may basically outsource content for different platforms, okay. uh, such as blogs, magazines, websites, and we have a lot of freelancers on our database. Okay. which we recruit and so uh, that's, we, what the, that's what the writer's website is that's about. that's what the writer's website is mm. about it's an online platform which we are planning to diversify and to expand in the coming months years hopefully and there's another one which we launched uh, shortly after called I say courses where we actually educate uh, young people and the okay. graduate and postgraduate students how to conduct academic research that's very interesting and that is in the UK that's that you, is in the UK uh, you're, you're from where I am from Bulgaria originally okay, fantastic now, so you move from Bulgaria, come to the UK, and mm -hmm. you're capitalizing on the opportunities here. Is this a land of dreams? It is Don't a land say of the dreams. Nobody the USA is a big A, you know. <laughs> a big a. Well, uh, yes, that's a good way to put it. It's a yeah. land of dreams. It's a land of hopes, uh, if you have the courage to make them come true. Yes. Uh, it's, uh, there's a lot of opportunities for young people mm -hmm. who graduate here, whether you'll be looking for a job, whether you'll be looking for uh, the right career path. Mm -hmm. uh, me and my business partner, we chose something completely different. We right. decided to set up a, a platform on our own. Um, the UK offers a lot of opportunities for young people. It's incredibly right. easy to set up a company here. And, and do you find that very effective because of the globalized world that we're in? That makes it much easier or is it with the relaxing of the European borders, mm. if anything? Yes, <coughs> absolutely. Globalization and uh, the advance of technology is mm. something that I can say has been the greatest advantage of launching a business online. Everything yeah. now takes place online. Yes. Uh, technology, social media has helped us tremendously to connect with the potential you know, employees, with potential clients, with potential investors. So tell me, definitely. Er earlier today when we were discussing yourself, uh, we talked about an online business shop, or we talk about a shop, and then we discuss and say, there's nothing a shop anymore because shops are closing down, but online mm. is becoming this massive shop. How would you okay. encourage people wanting to do that, if anything? Okay, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Yes. I'm glad you brought that up. Well, my advice to young people, if they want to make a business, uh, set up anything of their own, mm. is take it online as quickly yes. as you can, SAAP. Okay, that's yes. the future. I'm not saying that the regular businesses yes. will shut down, mm -hmm. but uh, the internet is giving us enormous opportunities for growth. Uh, we are more interconnected mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we are more connected to each other, to other businesses as well. My advice is yeah. start online. It's cheaper, it's faster, and it's more effective. Now tell me, now that's a massive drive. I mean, coming mm -hmm. to the UK and actually getting on the online shop because an online business, of course, could be from anywhere because it's globalized. Mm -hmm. What drives you then, or what should I say, what is that quote, what is that inspiration <laughs> that someone can listen to and say, wow, I want to do that, I can do that. What is it that we say that inspires you? What inspires me in terms of setting up a business? And setting up a business and going oh. for it in the UK. Bang, 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 okay. you know what I'm saying? Well, it's following my dream, my passion. Yeah. I always wanted to leave a legacy. Mm. I believe that with setting up this platform uh, with my business partner, we will yeah. definitely leave a legacy, uh, something different, something which one day will grow and work on its own. 
um, this was the main incentive behind it. The most inspirational things, people first and foremost, mm -hmm. young people who want to set up their own businesses, they have to find inspiration within themselves. I find what you said very crucial because it's something I hear a lot. As you know, the show, this program is a motivating, inspiring, educational. We use the word legacy. Mm -hmm. Legacy is something that comes around a lot. Why legacy? Why wanting to leave something behind? Why not take it with you? Why not take it with me? Maybe because it does not really belong to me. Mm. Maybe we create it for the world. Yeah. Uh, maybe I know it's a service and it's a commercial service mm. and believe me, there's nothing wrong in businesses making profits. Business are supposed yes. to make a profit. But of course, you have to also leave your legacy <coughs> for the community, I yes. believe, and the business community as such. Yes. Uh, your investors, your, co -par your partners, uh, your um, uh, clients, um, even those who are involved in your business. Yes. I believe that uh, it's the best way to make a contribution. Mm. Now, it's good making a contribution. And now, in the UK now, what we're having on May the 7th, we've got general elections. Mm. And in light of what you're saying with the business, do you see any of the major parties? I was going to say major parties. Okay. I was going to say Labour and, uh, and Conservative, but now you've got UKIP, you've got Green, oh, yes. you've got SNP. What do you see as the politicians' um, main focus and what they should focus on? Or what should they say as the Areas. top three mm. issues, if anything? It's a good question, <coughs> yes, and definitely something that we want to discuss before the elections. Uh, mm. So does everyone else, I guess. Uh, well, something that comes to my mind is always been related to uh, social policy, the social sector, the yeah. benefit system. Mm -hmm. uh, I do support what David Cameron did in 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, I do believe they need to reorganize the way um, these uh, money are actually distributed right. among the people. They really need to go into the right hands. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that there should be more budget cuts. Yes. I'm saying there should be more monitoring in that particular sphere so that yes. the money of the taxpayers go in the right hands. Right. That's the first thing, so That's the social, okay. the, the benefit okay. sector. A uh, second thing that comes to my mind, something that I was a little bit disillusioned with when Conservatives uh, mm. and uh, uh, Liberal Dems uh, started their uh, mandate uh, five years ago was uh, actually the rise of the education fees, uh, the okay. university fees. In uni mm. you know, many people these days, home students, I mean EU and UK, yes. they cannot really afford to go into university not full time. Mm -hmm. They are actually forced well, to work for a living well, what do you say while they study. What, what do you say now that they're not paying that fee right away, if anything? It's after well, they are working. It they're still they're has paying. been a huge increase. I mean, mm. from three thousand uh, pounds, yeah, to nine thousand. Mm. Of course, um, that's, that's a huge increase. I did not expect this coming. Maybe for international students, it's yes. much more understandable. Yes, yes. I think this is something that uh, is definitely the on the priority of the government for the coming uh, for but the coming but elections. But Labour is also thinking about dropping that to six thousand, if anything. Is that a promise you think they're making? Just Which like one? Labour. Is that planning on dropping the, the fee from 9,000 to 6,000? I wouldn't believe any promises the Labour would make. <laughs> I know why you're asking me this, but no but, way. But Lib Dem, Lib Dem had said no fees. And they end up, um, <coughs> okay, they're there. using it now as a political weapon, so, yes. obviously. Yes. Uh, nobody really cares about the reform of the educational mm -hmm. sector, the way these money will be collected, yes. how much it's going to cost. Right now it's clearly political and it should not be. Yes. Okay, it should be educational. What the Labour will say, they can say, many things. Yes. We are right before the elections, everyone will be making mm. their own promises, that's the idea. They're very political, I must Of say. course, if they yeah. bring them down, it will only work in their favor. Are you trying to stand as, a, as some office or some office in the Public UK figure. Well? Oh, I'm not, you know, no, I'm just... Maybe uh, we should put you on a political show here. Yeah. Maybe we should one day, yeah. <laughs> I'm open to all opportunities. I have my views, I'm very opinionated. Yeah, exactly. But the idea here is mm. that uh, Whoever brings the fees down yes. will definitely work in their favor because they have a huge, huge mm. electorate in the face of the students. Well, you mentioned two. Um, third one, did you mention something about... Uh, what, what's your third, third one, one yeah. maybe something more far-fetched related to foreign policy. We should not repeat the mistake of what happened in Iraq mm. uh, 2003, the invasion. Mm. A lot of money was spent on the intervention in yes. Iraq. Yeah. I mean, it was shared, of course, between the US and the UK but uh, the economy suffered and yes. it took many, many years after that for a conservative party to actually amend what the Labour had done. I'm not blaming it entirely yes. on Tony Blair and his government. Yes. Maybe it was a necessity back then, they just have to be more cautious. If another intervention yes. is to happen with, you know, having in mind what's happening in Syria at yeah. the moment with the IS, Iraq again, ISIS they like should that, be yeah. much more cautious and they should be much more cautious budget-wise. And the business community and everyday people in the UK, because we tapped on foreign policy, we tapped on mm -hmm. um, the benefit, we tapped on also the education. Um, <coughs> what about like apprentice and SMEs 
mm -hmm. and, and things like that. I think the best home for them is the UK. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you why. Here, since we started up um, our journey in the business world mm -hmm. two years ago, uh, we have had a lot of opportunities for networking, a lot of opportunities for private mentoring, yes. crowdfunding campaigns. Mm -hmm. There's so many independent organizations right here, even universities yes. like, like King, King's College and mm -hmm. their wonderful uh, Enterprise Connect, uh, right. uh, who actually provide opportunities for young people to mentor them, to teach them how to set up their own business, how yes. to achieve their market goals, how to brand, how to expand, how to recruit. Is, is that something that you also do with the, the Writers website, with your research? Is that something that you also do, the, what you're saying now, in getting that information out there to people? Oh, in terms of uh, businesses, well, we mm. don't have a business to mentor at the moment because mm. we are still being mentored. Yes, yes. <laughs> We're still something like a very you know, small startup planning to become bigger in the future, of course. But um, the idea here is that the UK offers a lot of opportunities for young people and they are completely yes. free. Uh, mentoring yes. organizations, uh, organizations which are non-governmental mm. and they're ready uh, to go there, out there and to help you out to all this very, very difficult journey. Yeah. I want to come back now, back again to the election. And um, for those who want their voices to be heard, mm -hmm. what can you suggest as a way to do this? And I say this in the background of the election which is coming on and people are believing that it doesn't make a difference whether it's Labour, Conservative or Lib Dem. What can you suggest as a way to do this? Speak well. Speak louder. If yeah. you want to be heard, speak louder. It's speak a, it's louder? A, it's a democratic country. How do you speak louder? Um, use social media platforms. Yeah. Use community organizations. Yeah. Use the streets. Go yeah. out in the streets. Say your opinion. Speakers' corner. Hyde Park. Yeah. Approach the politicians. What about approach voting? to. Voting is the other one, okay? Mm. If you want, I think <coughs> voting is very important. Everybody mm. needs to vote. Yes. It's part of your political culture because if you want the government to meet certain obligations. Yes. You need your contribution, your vote ways. Yes. Okay? This is the idea of popular democracy. Mm -hmm. It's based on the decision of the people to choose their own governments. Yes. Now, if you have not chosen your government and you have not made it to the poll, yes. there's no way you can later on blame that government right. on any mistake. And this is what people so like to do. So do you think in the UK now, um, there's this apathy towards elections and to politics and to voting at the same time? Because in the last election, I think it was maybe 64 or that is why they said even the Labour, even the Conservative, which is in power, mm -hmm. it is a minority government. And people are saying, well, we didn't vote you in. Or then when you take it out now, you've got Labour, Conservative, Lib Dem. It's like the people are actually saying something like, we don't want one particular party. Do you think, like in this election coming up now, Nobody knows what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Will it be a hung party? A hung, definitely a hung. I'm <coughs> definitely going mm. for a hung. I have my reasons yeah. for this. But um, you said apathy. Yes, there is always the voters' mm. fatigue. This mm. is something very common. And political scientists, they usually yes. call it like the voters' fatigue. People, of course, are tired of voting. Yes. People are disillusioned. And many of them mm. don't have uh, the, the faith yes. in government anymore. Um, anyway, my advice is that if you want to see a change, you have to make the change happen. Yes. Yes. Every single little vote counts. Especially Especially in a system which is like first yes. past the post, where every single vote counts yes. and it's distributed and so on and so forth. So Good. it's very important for Fantastic. people to vote. So tell me now, where do you see yourself now in 10 years' time? Hmm. I know I'm putting you on the spot. You might be divulging some trade secrets. I don't want you to divulge ah. any trade secrets. <laughs> but where do you see yourself in 10 years' time in the UK, the land of dreams? Mm -hmm. I don't know if many people will be happy about that, the land of dreams. They might be saying, really? You have but to make them happen. <laughs> you have to really work hard yes. for these dreams to come true. Yes. A lot of opportunities, tough country, but you have to make it happen. You can make it happen. Yes, yes of course. Where I see myself in 10 years' time, um, happy, successful businesswoman living mm. in London, perhaps um, several more. Uh, websites we're working on at the moment. We have many more ideas, uh, many more things that we want to yes. achieve in the future. Building a successful, wonderful, mm -hmm. happy team. I want the people who work for us eventually yes. to be really happy, to feel fulfilled. And all I see is just more opportunities for growth, really. Fantastic. Now, that's great. So, therefore, definitely, I believe, in light of the, the discussion that we've had, we definitely will have to organize, like, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we'll have to organize a, a, a debate show on politics before the elections. Maybe we can get some party leaders and try to see what can Absolutely. happen, if anything like that. It's important to Fantastic. put that on the spotlight. Now, before we, find, before we go, tell me, is there any word that you want to say to any young persons upcoming who want to get involved in business mm -hmm. or whatever? Just your final nugget. Mm -hmm. you know, speak to them. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, the first thing I would really advise them, I said it before, um, 
take it online, mm. do it online, use the internet, yes. use the social media. Yes. It is here to help us as much as it can harm us. It is here to help us, especially if you are a small business entrepreneur, dreaming of, make it big, of making it big, of course. Believe in yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. You should find inspiration mostly within yourself. Be right. perseverant, but be also realistic, okay? Try to bring the right people mm -hmm. in your team. Try to find the right business partner who can also bring skill sets. Right. Uh, to the actual uh, team, mm, try to create the realistic business setup. Yep. Being just a dreamer doesn't help. There's wow. many people with action. big ideas right there. This it's not the just reality. about action, the right action, yes, okay? Yes. You have to be very well aware mm -hmm. what this business will cost you, and it's gonna cost you a lot. Right, there right. will be a lot of sleepless nights. Be prepared yes. and be perseverant. The other thing is have a very realistic business setup and mm -hmm. business plan. Mm -hmm. You have to know what your expectations are, what your upcoming expenditures are, uh, what your possible, possible revenues yes. will be. Yes. Okay, different parts of revenues as well. You have to be very precise, right, believe right. it or not. You cannot just dream there with your big idea. Implementation, the difference between a great idea mm -hmm. and a great business is the implementation. Fantastic. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank so much Gurgana for coming today. And the key words that we got is perseverance, having your dreams. Mm -hmm. Not just a dream, but you've got to act on your dream. You've got to be real at the same time. And yes, you can do it in the land of dreams. Yes, the United Kingdom. I didn't say the big A, the United Kingdom. Well, talking to you has been enlightening, Gurgana. And thank I want you to so say much. thank you for joining us today. And if you want to know more about Gurgana, what I'll say is visit our website www.silburn.com www.silburn.com and you can find out more about Gurgana and what we're doing. This thank has you. been the Silburn Show and thank you for joining us today. If you know someone who is inspiring, educating, entertaining and motivating and they fit the bill, tell them about us. Get them on the sofa. We want them to inspire you and you and you. Thank you so much for joining us.